I want you to hear a very clear example of form phrasing in action. And this is by Freddie Hubbard in one of his all-time great solos on Birdlike. Hey everybody, it's Tito and welcome to Jazz Mind. This is your channel for learning jazz improvisation, learning how to make the trumpet easier, and mindfulness for musicians. I got a great video for y'all today, but before we do that, don't forget to smash that like button. Oh no, I just said smash the like button. I think I'm turning into a YouTuber. Anyway, hit the like button. And I really want to thank you all once again for your great comments and your great feedback that I'm getting from all of the videos so far. If you haven't checked out my previous videos, please, I got a nice little list growing. This channel is uh, only about a month and a week or two old, and uh, it's been amazing. So let's get right to it. The keys to melodic soloing, they are phrasing and space. Anyone who's been playing jazz for a while knows that the early part of your development was spent primarily transcribing and getting your tools together, your vocabulary, learning the chord scale relationships, obviously listening, getting the style down, all so that you could be able to manage playing over real compositions. Well, phrasing is the discipline where all of that knowledge is turned into coherent musical thoughts. In order to develop your sense of phrasing over a given tune, all of your current theoretical knowledge and vocabulary for that tune must have already graduated to the subconscious level. As Scott Reeves calls them, they must have become trained musical instincts by this point. So that your mind is free to think over and above the small details and focus on the larger structure of your solo. I think most people don't realize how much focus and repetitive practice it takes to get something into muscle memory, but that's what's required if you wanna begin working on phrasing. So what is a phrase? We need to define it. A phrase is like a musical statement, or I like to say a musical sentence. So when you relate this to speaking, some sentences are really short, like he's broke and she split. But then other sentences are like four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth a new nation conceived in liberty, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I didn't learn the whole thing, but you get the point. And so musically, you can have short phrases and you can have very long phrases. Like sentences and grammar, each phrase should have a very clear beginning and ending. In singing, a vocalist should be able to sing any phrase in one breath, regardless of phrase length. When people write music for singers, they have to take into account the limitation of the human breath. So musical phrasing is tied to the human breath. And I need you piano players and guitarists and bass players and drummers to pay attention. Phrases are the music that occurs between breaths. Why is phrasing important? Phrasing is where the nuts and bolts of jazz theory and vocabulary transform into spontaneous musical composition. You could say that the opposite of phrasing would be simply what's called running the changes, or in essence, basically trying to just play nonstop and fit everything that you know theoretically into the solo. My friends, this does not bode well when trying to captivate an audience. Phrasing involves self-editing, breaking up your solo material into smaller chunks. It involves not playing everything you know all the time. Now, there are so many reasons that good phrasing in a jazz solo is so important, but I'm gonna give you four, okay? Number one, it provides the soloist a brief moment to process 
what has already been played, and for this to inform the direction of the next idea, whether to continue developing a previous idea or to start a new one. Number two, it can provide both your bandmates and the audience a clearer sense of the form and structure of the tune during your improvisation. Number three, provide some needed space in your solo, which tends to promote more group interaction and conversation. And number four, your playing becomes less predictable, which can captivate your listeners throughout the duration of your solo. So now we got to get into how do we actually practice phrasing? Well, the first way to practice is to do a technique that I call form phrasing. What is form phrasing? Form phrasing means that your solo content should lie within the clear sections of the form of a given tune, divisible by twos. So what I mean by this is, let's say you have a 12-bar blues form. We normally should think of the blues form as four bars plus four bars plus four bars. Three sets of four-bar phrases. Form phrasing would mean that you would take the breath, meaning you would leave the pause, leave the space, right before a new section of the form happened. So a new four-bar phrase. But you could break this down even further since 12 is divisible by two, you could play one measure phrase and maybe rest that second measure and continue playing one measure phrases like that. This idea of starting at the beginning of a new section in form phrasing, it's kind of a general area. So sometimes the soloist might take a pickup measure and start the action then, or sometimes they might wait a couple of beats after the new section arrives and then begin their idea. But the, the general idea is that you're going to take your breath and your pause right before a new section happens, and then you're going to attack that new section. You're not going to wait for the new section to turn around before starting, you know, a couple bars later or something like that. And this helps you to retain this conviction of ideas throughout your solo. But the main idea is that you're going to take your musical breath or your actual breath right before a new section begins. This, I have found, is one of the most common phrasing approaches by master jazz artists. Now, keep in mind that what makes a master so great is that they are unpredictable. So this is a general rule, not a hard and fast rule. This is kind of like you could say the default setting for good phrasing. And then, of course, an artist can start to vary their phrase lengths and make their phrasing unpredictable. But I would say most of the time they return to this default type of phrasing that I call form phrasing. So before I show you a way to practice form phrasing, I want you to hear a very clear example of form phrasing in action. And this is by the all-time great jazz trumpeter, Freddie Hubbard, in one of his all-time great solos. And I'm talking about his 19 chorus blues solo on Bird Like off of Ready for Freddy. And if you haven't heard it, shame on you. Please stop this video right now and go listen to it. I'm kidding, don't stop the video. But I'm not kidding about go listen to it. So due to copyright issues, I can't really play the album right now here on this recording. So I'm gonna have to play a portion of it. No, I'm not gonna play the entire 19 choruses for you right now. I'm gonna play you a good number of choruses. But I want to highlight to you the exact moments where Freddie chooses to leave space and take his breath. And you're going to see that an overwhelming majority of this solo, at least the portion that I'm going to play for you, is form phrasing. And when he diverts from form phrasing, it's also very clear and it's intentional. But he always comes back to it. Check this out.
Notice how during the first few choruses of that solo, Freddie was pretty consistent at taking his breath, taking his pause right before a new four bar section. And almost every single time he would take it right before the top of the chorus, like whether it be in the uh, 12th measure of the blues, or sometimes he'd resolve to the 11th measure of the 12 bar form and then leave that break and then attack the top of the next chorus, right? And then there was that one time later in the snippet that I played you where he blew right through that, the end of a chorus and connected one chorus right into the top of another with this super long line. But then notice what he did right after that, he got right back into form phrasing. And when you go on and listen to the rest of that solo, like I know you're going to, um, you're going to hear plenty more examples of form phrasing. So now let's get back to how to practice form phrasing. And I want to reiterate that you can really only do this with tunes that you know really well. Tunes that you don't need to read the chord changes, that you've already maybe performed many times, and you know the changes really well, and it's just like second nature to you. So before I give you a good example of form phrasing, I'm actually going to play over an F blues. I'm just going to start improvising and I'm going to just breathe in random spots. And I want you to hear what that sounds like. Right. So you heard that you could hear that it was kind of awkward in certain spots. Sometimes I would take a breath right at the beginning of one of the new sections and it seemed like there was a lull in the action. And there's definitely a time and place for intentional awkward phrasing, for example. Remember, all rules are made to eventually be broken. But awkward phrasing can actually throw off your bandmates where they think, oh, maybe I messed up the form and I'm not in the right spot. And then you start chasing each other and it can lead to some kind of train wreck. So now over in F Blues, I'm going to give you very clear form phrasing. And I will show you in the captions when I'm doing like a three plus one type of phrasing where I play three measures, rest one, or maybe I play two measures and rest two or maybe I play one measure, rest one measure, and do short phrases like that.
Form phrasing should be the starting home base for your phrasing practice and can be applied to any type of composition, even tunes with complex forms and odd meters. The key is to know where the sections are of the tune and breathe or pause for you non-wind instrumentalists and non-vocalists. Pause before the start of the new section. Be sure to end your phrases with conviction. In essence, end them either rhythmically or end them like you mean it. And don't let them simply sputter out. Once you feel comfortable with form phrasing, you can generate even more interest and spontaneity by then beginning to vary your phrase lengths and even playing odd measure phrases on occasion. This gives the impression that you could start and stop your flow of ideas over any part of the tune and it will still make sense. But again, this will not be truly effective until your form phrasing is solid. I really think this technique of form phrasing is an important tool. How many times have you heard from your jazz band director or teacher, you know, you should leave more space in your solos? It's very common. I used to hear that all the time about my solos as well. But the question is where to take that pause and how to do it in a musical way. I think a lot of times people tend to play run on sentences because it feels awkward to stop their flow and take a breath and they don't know when to get back on and that type of thing. I really feel that here's a technique that will give you confidence to know that, no, this is a musical way of leaving space that will allow you to continue sounding confident all the way through your solo. Phrasing in jazz is crucial to capturing the truly spontaneous spirit of this art form. A soloist who chooses to phrase and play ideas rather than sticking only to running the changes means that they're listening to themselves and to others and they're responding to those ideas, similar to like a question and answer or a call and response scheme. Their solo improvisations are not simply a display of all of their skills in their toolbox, but rather a coherent, spontaneous composition in its own right. I hope you like this message about phrasing in space. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you want to share your thoughts about phrasing or you have any questions about what I said in this video, please drop me a comment below. And if you've been getting value from these videos and you've watched more than one and they've been helping you, then guess what? You need to subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss when every new video drops. I am posting weekly and I'm having a great time doing it. So be looking out for some new content. If you watch this video all the way to the end, you're the real ones. And I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. I will see you next time. Peace.